about the internet of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. Moving the whole revolution forward. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, Tor Power Script, let's get right in today's video. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this picture that was posted by Brad Garlinghouse in front of the SEC. Do you think these guys are going to Supreme Court? This is why I've been saying the IMF, the World Bank, the WEF, Trump, the SEC, and they're on the side of Ripple and its digital asset XRP. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. If you look close enough, you will see Gary Gensler being who he is, a little rat, looking through the window as Brad Garlinghouse takes a picture in front of the SEC. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. This is going to be absolutely crazy. A lot of people are going to realize the value of XRP when it's already over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars. Where do we even begin? We're going to get into Visa, Swift, Ripple, Volpe. Every single information that we're going to go over in today's video is 100% factual. They're going to lie to you. They're gonna do these little indirect partnerships. They're gonna say Visa is working with Swift. We're gonna get into it in a moment. But everything is a smoke show. You gotta follow the money, you gotta follow the partnerships. Take a listen to what Joe Volono says here. He is currently working at Ripple. And previously, he was at Morgan Stanley for seven, almost eight years, folks. And now he's on a panel with Visa, talking about wholesale CBDCs. Take a listen to this. Um, and, and you know, I'll key in on a couple of things that I took note of uh, and try to connect, connect the dots up to a question that I'd really be curious to hear, um, hear some conversation on. So first of all, on Project Mariana, um, you know, that's, that's a fascinating body of work and it's something Ripple in parallel is exploring, um, you know, how we can facilitate cross-border, cross-currency, um uh uh transactions using uh an automated market maker and and one of the things i think claudine commented on earlier was was the idea of pools of liquidity and i think that's one of the often overlooked elements of this is having that liquidity in place uh is really critical to make sure making sure those models function um so that's just one one observation i heard earlier um you know when, when we think about uh wholesale cbdc and some of the work ripple is doing we have projects happening globally with different central banks. Um, one, one that I'll highlight is with uh, the Central Bank of Colombia, where we are exploring whether a WCBDC uh, can be used as a credit risk-free settlement asset for, um, for government bonds um, with respect to their high value payment system. Remember what I said, liquidity is gonna be the driver in this next infrastructure and it needs deep liquidity. He talked about Project Mariana cross-border exchange wholesale CBDCs using automated market makers. And this is Ripple's secret sauce. Take a look at this right here. This is a basket of currencies, okay? And as you guys could see right here, LP, that is a liquidity pool token yet to be named. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And it gets even deeper. This paper was published July 2023, Trust Bridges and Money Flows. This is from the BIS, the same company that is doing the Project Mariana proof of concept with Monetary Authority of Singapore, Bank de France, and Swiss National Bank, which we know all tied to Ripple and XRP. This paper was also put together by Tobias Adrian. You guys all know who he is, right? But if you think further into the future, if, if such sort of coins would become more important in some future monetary system, um, there surely will be further implications for the international monetary system. And But take a listen to what they say here. Fifth, 
an important question is who builds and operates such a marketplace and which rules will govern it? Remember what Jerome Powell said. The potentially fast and wide adoption of a global stable coin, potentially a global currency governed only by the incentives of a private company, only by the incentives of a private company, is something that will deserve and will receive the highest level of regulatory expectations and will receive the highest level of regulatory expectations. It makes perfect sense, right? And then that's why we have three models arise. A private settlement asset and marketplace such as Ripple's XRP, an open source marketplace such as Stellar Foundation, or more recently DeFi Networks, a marketplace and settlement asset based on unbacked crypto assets such as Strike, which leverages Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. Bitcoin Lightning Network is not going to go folks it's not going to happen so we got three models so they have the stellar foundation and we have at ripple and xrp and you guys all know i hold zero xlm it's going to do really well but you just cannot compare ripple and stellar because ripple is way 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 bigger way bigger than what stellar is trying to achieve and ladies and gentlemen the best part of the video visa comes out and partners with SWIFT to enhance transparency, speed, security, and global B2B money movement? Are you kidding me? Do they think we're stupid? Through this collaboration, financial institutions on both networks will have more routing options for their business customers with real-time status and updates. In a world facing increased fragmentation, these efforts advance the goals of both organizations to keep the world's financial infrastructure connected with the right levels of security, resiliency, reliability, and compliance. And one takeaway we could take from this is the fact that Swift and Visa, they could have been partnered a long time ago. This is like their little baby products that they're just coming together and saying, let's try to do this now because the private sector is coming in hot. They're all working together behind the scenes. Like you really can't make this stuff up. This is Volpe cross-border payments and we have Swift GPI, Ripple, Visa B2B, Visa Direct and more, right? We know Ripple is a partner at Volante Technologies and we know they, both, they support the Swift GPI along with Ripple. We view Volante as a critical partner for building this Ripple new real-time data-rich payment network. Ripple, Swift GPI, Visa, they're all going to be working together 100%. There is no stopping that whatsoever. And we even have Volante Technology raising money and Visa is one of the individuals that actually funded this growth in Volante Technologies. And it gets even better because what are the odds that Visa bought every single company that Ripple had partnered with. Is that gonna shock you? I'm, I gotta bring this back to you guys, don't forget. Ripple Labs and Earthport announced a global partnership back in 2014. And then, a couple years later, Visa acquired control of Earthport. If you guys recall, Visa and MasterCard were bidding to get Earthport. And, in, and this year, we had MasterCard come out and be vocal about their partnership with Ripple for CBDCs. Currency Cloud announced a partnership with Ripple back in July 2020. I'm sure you guys could all guess what's about to happen. A year later, Visa acquired Currency Cloud, right? It's all a coincidence right it's all a coincidence or i'm making this up it's all there's nothing to see here folks there's nothing to see whatsoever shall i keep going d money partners with ripple to power faster and cheap cross-border money transfers guess what happens oh god guess what happens d money pairs up with visa to empower near real-time cross-border payments ladies and gentlemen I do appreciate every single one of you guys. Keep in mind, what's going on behind the scenes is much, much bigger than you think. They know that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity 
for individuals to actually benefit from blockchain technologies and actually make some money off of it. They will drag this on if needed. You got to understand we're dealing with individuals with basically blank checks, millionaires, billionaires that could care less. They will drag this on until they get everything on board, until they get a level playing field. Ripple is that last, last stretch of the end. Like once this is all said and done, it sounds extremely cliche, but people don't understand how big this is gonna get. And every day I show you guys the hardcore evidence. They're not gonna come out and vocally say Ripple XRP. They already know Ripple and XRP have so much eyes on them. And if they were to come out here and say, oh, we're working with the World Bank, we're working with the IMF, we're working with Visa, we're doing this, we're doing that, it's that's not how these guys operate. Remember what Brad Garlinghouse said. They will announce their partnerships when they are ready to do so. Is we had customers we're meeting. So, look, we are working. I'm aware there's some rumors out there. Uh, you, you know, we announce our customer relationships when our partners are ready to announce that, mm -hmm. and is part of working with the industry and not kind of trying to surprise them. Right. You know, we, we will make those announcements when uh, we and our customers are ready. And there are partnerships out there that will completely shock what shock everybody out there folks i like i promise you there this is a big 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 deal what's happening right now that's why they went after ripple and it's digital asset xrp that's why brad garlinghouse could stand here and take a picture like this do you know how i know it's just a picture but this is a big deal this is game over folks it's game over with that being said i do appreciate every single one of you guys never doubt what you're holding we connect the dots on this channel there's nothing to be worried about diamond hands ladies and gentlemen 10 20 30 40 50 60 100 will be achieved 100 percent because it logically makes sense and we will be back with another video my name is uh, Brandon Smith. I'm a 32-year-old video producer. So I originally invested in Tesla in 2017. I invested $10,000 and today it's worth, I think about a million dollars, give or take a couple hundred thousand, depending on the day. And you know, it's, it's really only just beginning. I found this guy, his name was Galileo Russell on YouTube. He has a channel called Hyperchange. And his first or second video kind of inspired me and I, looked around further and I found this forum called the Tesla Motors Club Forum and there was these really, really smart people that covered the company in ways that, frankly, I just wasn't seeing in the news. And I was like, these guys are digging deep into the financial documents of the company and really knew what they were talking about. My reaction when this stock exploded in 2020 was finally, I mean, the stock traded flat from 2014 through 2019. Back in 2017, direction that the world was going. I mean, these weren't just cars that we're talking about. We're talking about propulsion in general. Planes, trains, automobiles, you name it, all of this stuff is going electric. I have never really thought of a point to where I would say, I'm good, I'm gonna sell. You know, yeah, I'm currently at a good spot, but if you look at the company's trajectory, we're only at the beginning. I have no reason to sell, mostly because, you know, I've, I've got my own place to live right now. I'm not in any big hurry. There's no real reason to, uh, to completely upend my life and ruin the ability for me to, you know, look at this growth rate and just give up on it and say, yeah, I don't want to be a part of that. That's crazy. you got to be a part of this. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> building has you know it's solving a real problem and i think all of the tokens my advice to anybody would be 
understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.